Uh, good evening. I would like to call the November 9th, 2021 meeting of the Bloomington Housing and Redevelopment Authority to order. Our first order of business is call to order. Myra, may we have the roll call, please? Hugheim. Here. Beloga. Present. Lewis. Here. Olson. Thorson. Here. Let the record note that um, Commissioner Olson is not present. Thank you. Um, moving on to item number two, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? Are there any, first, are there any um, changes or additions that anyone would like to have? Chair Lewis, I'd like to add number 6.4, which is Commissioner Question and Answers. Thank you. Um, do I hear approval of the amended agenda? Beloga, so moved. Who came seconds? Thank you. It has been moved by Commissioner uh, Beloga, second, a second by Commissioner Who came to approve the agenda. May we have the roll call vote, please? Beloga. Aye. Who came? Aye. Lewis. Aye. Thorson. Aye. Motion passed four to zero. Thank you. We are now looking at uh, approval of minutes. That's number three on the agenda. Uh, item 3.1 is approval of the minutes from October 12th, 2021. Are there any additions or corrections? Uh, Chair Lewis, we need to just wait till Commissioner Olson. I will. Commissioner Olson has just entered um, the council chambers. I'll wait until he is seated. You're welcome. All right. We are on item number three, approval of the minutes. We are 3.1, approval of the minutes of October 12th, 2021. Hearing no additions or corrections, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of October 12th, 2021? Who was here? Uh, Commissioner Olson moved that we approve those minutes. Thank you. Is there a second? Beloga second. Thank you. It has been moved by Commissioner Olson with a second by Commissioner Beloga to approve the minutes of October 12th, 2021. May we have the roll call vote, please? Beloga. Aye. Hugheim. I abstain as I was not here for that meeting. Thank you. Lewis. Aye. Olson. Aye. Thorson. Abstain. Thank you. Uh, motion passed three to zero with two abstentions. Thank you. Um, moving on to item 3.2, this would be approval of the minutes of October 26th, 2021. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of October 26th? Commissioner Hukim moves to approve the October 26th HRA Commission meeting minutes. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Hukim with a second by Commissioner Thorson to approve the minutes of October 26th, 2021. May we have the roll call vote, please? Beloga. Abstain. Thank you. Hukim. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Olson. Aye. Thorson. Aye. Motion passed four to zero to one abstention. Thank you. Um, moving on to number four, organizational business. Um, is there any organizational business? Administrator Coleman. Not this evening, thank you. Thank you. Um, we're now moving on to item number five, new business. First item is 5.1, approval of home improvement loan program. May we have the staff report, please? Thank you, Erica Coleman, HRA Administrator. Um, so at our meeting on October 12th, we did have um, great conversation amongst um, our board here and walked line by line of the proposed changes to the Home Improvement Loan Program. And specifically, 
what we looked at was uh, the loan limit, increasing it from 35000 to 40000 plus up to an additional $10,000 for accessibility improvements for CDBG and neighborhood. We also um, looked at and in, uh, proposed increasing the HELP loan amount to $7,500. Uh, we left the interest rate at what it currently is for CDBG and neighborhood at 2% simple interest for 10 years. However, for HELP, which is housing and environmental loan program, the interest rate is 0% proposed. The loan terms, we uh, brought them down from 40-year deferred to 30-year deferred for CDBG and neighborhood. And for help, um, instead of it being a 40-year deferred loan, it is forgiven after three years of continued occupancy, considering it's for emergency purposes. Income limits, um, I misspoke at the last meeting. Uh, it was verified that household size, that income is adjusted for household size. So 80% AMI or below for CDBG, 80% AMI or below for neighborhood, and 81 to 100% with proof of denial from Minnesota Housing Network lender. However, adjusting the in, looking at the income and calculating it, staff does adjust for household size. And then for help, it would be 80% AMI or below, still adjusted for household size. Equity limit, uh, we had a lot of discussion and was previously proposed to be 20% or $20,000 of equity in your home, whichever is greater. And in our discussion for both neighborhood and CDBG, we increased it to 30% or $30,000 of equity in your home, whichever is greater. And then for um, help, that is not applicable for that program. Asset limit, we increased to $50,000 asset limit uh, for all three programs, but it does exclude deferred compensation and one vehicle per adult in the household. So those would not be taken into consideration when, when considering assets. We are removing the equity match that is currently in place. So the equity match says that if you want to borrow $10,000 to do work, you would need to have at least $10,000 of your home, of equity in your home. And the question that was answered was that, how would we make sure to secure um, our loans? And that is because the combined loan to value, so our loan and any other debt on the house does not exceed 100% loan to value. Exclusions, uh, age 55 plus or on a fixed income as a primary source will be excluded from the equity limits as stated above. And value limit was um, a conversation on should we have a value limit on the property? And we all discussed that and the commissioners um, in the discussion said no, no value limit. And then uh, the application, there was a uh, Combined customer-led application for CDBG and neighborhood, which is how it is now. It's just that the programs are necessarily called out separately, but it's one application, and staff does the work to put them in the different buckets. So we would still have one application. That comes down to how we advertise it. But for help, that is not an application that um, – staff would that excuse me that the public would just apply for online they would have to be uh, referred by building inspections environmental health or have a red flagged heating and electrical system by a utility company so that would be contacting the hra if they have that red flagged system that's contacting the hra and saying i need to complete this and or contacting environmental health which is also who would might know those ahead of time and so with those changes um, there was additional conversation in reference to um, making sure that we're clear that the program will be reviewed every two years, um, but we do review on annual reporting, and so the program is reviewed by the board brought forward annually. Um, we would like to collect the information on with these proposed changes, who is served, how are they being served, and the results of that. Accessibility improvements. Um, the pay, on page 21 of the proposed manual, it's the permitted accessibility improvements are listed there. 
And then um, one of the things was to clarify whole insurance, not to be confused with term insurance in um, establishing assets. And then um, just increasing our relationships and advertising with other uh, community-based entities that help people along the way complete the application, referring to other resources and other information like that. And so what you have before you are the updated manual and guidelines based on that conversation and the updated chart of current program and proposed program changes based on that conversation and agreement. And I can stand for any questions, but I am um, looking to a motion to approve this tonight and bring this program back up. Thank you for your hard. Thank you for your hard work on that um, proposal. Uh, do are there any questions for staff? Yes, Commissioner Beloga. Uh, on page sixty-two, and Myra, could you just uh, of which, of which uh, the next page down from oh, one up? Guidelines. Oh, proposed. There you go. I'm sorry. On, um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought I had 62. It was the page that you had before. That's current. Um, why doesn't someone else take it now? See if I can find my uh, item again here. Okay. Sorry about that. Are there any other questions for? Staff. Oh. Yes, Commissioner Olson. Hi, thank you, Chair Lewis. Um, I, I just would like to uh, um, remind viewers that um, uh, we've looked at this quite thoroughly over at least three meetings, I think, and, um, and grappled with uh, all of the issues, and um, it's timely that we are um, moving in this direction, uh, both in terms of uh, reminding ourselves of, of the charge that we have as an HRA, but also uh, in terms of the, the difficulty of people who are working hard to um, build equity, uh, get capital basis uh, going in their, in their families, and uh, that tends to end up working out very well for the community as well as for the family. Thank you, Commissioner Olson. Are there other questions for staff, comments? <clears throat> Commissioner Beloga, have you found your spot? Uh, unfortunately, I lost all my highlighting. I don't know what happened there, but uh, uh, I have not. Just, uh, I do have a different question though. With respect to the equity limits of 30%, so if someone bought a house with zero financing, 0% uh, down, so they had no equity in, let's say, 2015, mm -hmm. my sense is, is that they would be excluded from the 30%, um, excluded because their equity position was greater than 30% just due to the rise in value over the last six years. Thank you, uh, Chair Lewis and Commissioner Beloga. Could be, but in the last six years, they could have took out another mortgage and they might not have the same amount of equity. They could have did something else. But if it's very simple that maybe in 2015, they bought a property for $300,000 and they get an appraisal now, mind you, appraisals are about a year behind, they get an appraisal now, and they've been making regular payments, not doubling up or anything like that, making regular payments, they potentially could be at 30% or $30,000, whichever is greater. So if they bought it for, if they're over the 30%, then yes, they could potentially not qualify because of that amount of equity. And... Uh It, it just strikes me as, you know, that 
that this is uh, an area that needs some further discussion, and, and unfortunately I wasn't here for the last two, and maybe everybody is satisfied with that, but I think that we've had a significant number of people move into our city in the last five, six years, uh, particularly in the starter home uh, uh, area, and those are the people who were really trying to focus this to, you know, uh, particular, you know, with emphasis on the uh, criteria of income and um, making uh, these funds inaccessible because of things that are beyond their control just seems to be problematic for me. Um, are there any other, I was gonna, Commissioner uh, Thorson. I did not we indicate. Did, I was gonna say, we did discuss this at length last meeting. And um, what I would ask is that um, <clears throat> if you have a suggestion on how we should adjust it, um, the one thing we did at our previous meeting was we tried to be very specific about we wanted what we wanted to see in the program, the program changes that we wanted to see. So, um, Commissioner Beloga, what in your mind would you recommend for that? Because here again, um, we can continue to discuss it, but I, I think we need to have an idea of what we're shooting for. Well, if, if you're uncomfortable with that, um, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm just trying to find out how would you, what would you have a suggestion on how we could improve that or change that so you would be comfortable with it? And, and I, I don't want to lead the ship here. You know, I, I, what I was hoping is, is to get a sense of, was there discussion on it? Yes. And was everybody else comfortable? And if everybody else is comfortable, uh, I just wanted to express my discomfort with that item. Yep. All right, that's, thank you. Thank you for that clarification. And we did discuss it a great deal um, at our last meeting. So it was the consensus at that time that we were comfortable with this. Now, obviously tonight, if people are feeling differently. Chair um, Lewis? Yes. Um, thank you, Chair Lewis. Commissioner Beloga, we did discuss it. Um, and the commissioners felt, because I had thrown out, well, maybe 40%. And the commissioners felt 40% was too high. So that's how we landed on 30%. And that's also why it was stressed to make sure that this program is reviewed and that we are collecting data about who is served and who is not served and where they stand to understand how this works because we're going from an equity match requirement. So if you wanted to buy or borrow $35,000 in your house, you had to have $35,000 in equity to an equity limit. So it's, it's definitely going to be something that we do have to measure but the commissioners were sure they did not want the equity match, but they also said they feel 40% right now is too high for an equity limit. Chair Lewis? Uh, yes, Commissioner Thurston. Um, what was the original number we were presented with? It was 20% of $20,000. Yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this was, you could call it a significant move. Um, I know that for myself, I, I was most comfortable with the you know, the 30% limit that does still feel like a good number. I'm now questioning the $30,000, though, which doesn't sound as much. Okay. And I don't know if for Commissioner Beloga if it's really the percentage or if it's the, the dollar amount, but $30,000 does seem pretty low. And what was staff's thought about kind of 20%, you know, 20,000, 30%, you know, having that, them correlate in that way? Thank you, Chair Lewis, Commissioner uh, Thorson. It was just continuity of numbers. There was not, mm -hmm. just so there wasn't confusion, you know, there's a two instead of saying 20%, $40,000, you know, just 30% yeah. of $300,000 is $30,000. Or I'm sorry, it's $90,000. So it's 30% or 30,000, whichever is greater. So it's not whichever is lesser. It's whichever is greater. So if you have 30% of equity in your $300,000 home, you can't go over 30%. So 29%, you can't go over it. 
Does that make sense? It it makes sense. What what's been proposed? Mm -hmm. So would would there be a proposal to change anything with this that we could amend it? Is there is anyone? Anyone else uncomfortable with this? About it, Commissioner Olson. Thank you, Chair Lewis. Um, one of the things that um, I believe I heard uh, Commissioner Beloga uh, comment about was in an inflationary factor. Um, and we are talking about reviewing this every other year. I'm wondering if, uh, without opening up a can of worms, if it would be appropriate to have uh, some statement somewhere. Um, I'm not sure I'll agree with this myself, but the, the concept of, of uh, if there are unusual circumstances, like we've recently gone through uh, the impact of, of, um, of uh, COVID coming along, and uh, we do have some precedent for making adjustments on a case-by-case -case basis, I think, right? Uh, Commissioner, uh, or Administrator Coleman. Yes, thank you, Chair Lewis. Commissioner Olson, there are, um, there are the ability to be um, a delegation to the HRA Administrator and some of the items in the manual, but also in the manual it states this manual is subject to modification or amendment at any time to ensure that the provisions contained herein conform to the requirements of the CDBG program, applicable state law, and all official interpretation thereof. The HRA may also make other changes to this manual at any time to update dates or for other minor updating. This manual is subject to review and updating from time to time by the HRA board. Okay. It's in there. Thank you for reminding me of that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Um, Oh, I'm sorry. No, if you're still on the same topic. Uh, okay. it, it's a point of clarification, and uh, I think a light just went on here. So 30%, and we're talking about a $300,000 value home, so that's $90,000, which is greater than $30,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, that takes my concerns on that one. And I... Reminded myself after looking at there was a greater of the two. I yeah, I, it, my previous I, I don't know why I had a, a I blind spot on that. Thing. But I uh, look at it a long time. <laughs> uh, and then it did come back to me on the other one, uh, going down the left-hand column, starting at loan limits. It's the second from the bottom exclusion. Mm -hmm. I think that is. Uh, to be excluded from income limits rather than equity limits. No, that's purposeful equity limits. So if they are on a fixed income, age 55 or older, or on a fixed income, excluded from the equity limit, that is purposeful. It's not the income limit. We can't exclude from income on CDBG. Okay, so what are we excluding? And We would exclude that equity limit cap of 30% or $30,000 if they are 55 or older or on a fixed so income. So the equity limit... Doesn't apply. Is not applicable if they're either 55 or older or on a fixed income. Yes, that's directly addressing some of the concerns by the board about uh, elderly and our aging population and people on fixed income that may not have another option or opportunity. Okay. Uh, I might suggest that that get reworded to make it uh, uh, a bit clearer. Uh, yes, Commissioner. Um, sorry, my, who came? My brain has just frozen up. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> this is just more of just a comment. Number one, first and foremost, thank you for all the work and thanks to the board for all the work. I know we've worked a long time on this. And I'm going to bring up something that is um, shows my ignorance um, a little bit here with the interest rate. Um, I learned something new this weekend that there's a specific culture, the Muslim culture, that does not, mm -hmm. they cannot pay interest. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious, because we've talked about, you know, mm -hmm. her certain exceptions, and I, I understand why we want to gain interest, because that helps pay back that loan. 
um, but that does kind of exclude a specific community. So is there a way that we're handling that, I guess? Um, since it, I do know we can do case by case. So due to religious. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For clarification, thank you, sorry. Thank you, Chair Lewis and Commissioner Huhim. no. Um, and part of that is uh, the religious exclusions are not in there. And it's, so this, these programs as proposed, the only one that is Sharia, Sharia compliant is HELP. Um, and so the, one of the things that staff, so my, myself as well as Mr. Hartman, as well as staff, talked about, if we eliminate interest, what do we do for all of the people that have previously taken out loans? So at this time, no, it is not Sharia compliant, and we are not proposing a religious exclusion for the interest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that question, too. Thank you. Um, are there any other comments or questions for staff? Um, I know Commissioner um, Baloga has talked about a refinement of the language for the exclusion, but um, I would like to bring this, move this for approval tonight if we can. Um, is that something, can we still make an adjustment, uh, um, administrator? Yes, comment? thank you, Chair Lewis. It would actually be a motion to approve the um, manual and the guidelines amending the language to, for clarity, for borrowers age 55 and older being exempt from property equity limits or borrowers on a fixed income as primary source of income being exempt from property equity limits. All right, thank you. Um, thank you for clarifying the, um, the motion. So now I would ask if there is um, a motion to approve the um, approval of, to approve the resolution approving home improvement loan program. I'm not gonna repeat everything you said because you said it just perfectly. Uh, do I hear a motion? on this item. Thank Commissioner you. Olson. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Olson, given the fact that you've... Uh, Thank you. Uh, Chair Olson, given the fact that you've uh, referred to uh, Administrator Coleman uh, wording, and, and I thought it was very uh, clear, uh, as long as that's in the record, if I can move that as a motion, I would appreciate doing that. Thank you. Is there a second? Uh, I will second. Thank you. It has been... A uh, moved by Commissioner Olson with a second by Commissioner who came to approve this item as stated by Administrator Coleman. Um, may I have the roll call vote, please? Who came? Aye. Beloga? Aye. Lewis? Aye. Olson? Aye. Thorson? Motion passed with the change five to zero. Thank you. And I wanna thank all of the commissioners for all of the hard work they did on this and also Administrator Coleman and all of her staff. Um, I think what we, and I think the end product was really good. So thank you everybody. Um, now moving on to item number 5.2 the 2022 final HRA budget and tax levy. May we have the staff report, please? Thank you, Chair Lewis, Erica Coleman, HRA Administrator. Um, on September 14th, we presented the preliminary budget to the HRA board at that meeting um, with the levy amount set at the maximum dollar amount of $2,718,683 for 2022 which is up from $2,654,532, excuse me, $2,654,532 in 2021. The Bloomington City Council will vote to approve the levy at their meeting on December 6, 2021. And so before you, uh, with no changes from the preliminary budget as proposed, um, we are asking for two motions tonight, um, approval of the budget for the year 2022 and approval of the resolution establishing the tax levies for year 2022 for the HRA. Thank you. Are there any questions for um, Administrator Coleman? Uh, yes, Commissioner Hukim. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just have a quick question of why um, Baker Tilly it has increased from, and I, I'm thinking we talked about this before, but just please re refresh my memory from 200,000 to 500,000. Absolutely. Thank you, Chair Lewis, Commissioner Huhim. Baker Tilly has increased because Baker Tilly uh, is being heavily dependent upon with the absence of an economic analyst, um, or excuse me, HRA analyst was the title. Uh, I've been working very closely with Baker Tilly, as well as there's been a lot with the, um, what is it? It's the HIA. It's HIA, but it's also um, the Aon deal. Um, as well as the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, the city took out bonds for that. And with COVID kind of impacted our timeline. And so there's been a lot of restructuring of that um, loan with the bank and approvals to see if we can draw down later than December 31st, 2021, because that is our deadline currently. And so there's a lot of things with Baker Tilly, um, but with just the increased development as our municipal advisor, Baker Tilly is why we increased it. What we have typically done is we have budgeted at $200,000 and then we move funds and adjust at the end of the year. This year, we're just proposing the amount that's closer to what we have been spending without adjusting the funds later on, which we might still do. I don't want you to think, you know, <laughs> not saying we will, but we might. So please be prepared. <laughs> Thank you, Administrator Coleman. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Are there any other questions for staff or uh, Administrator Coleman. If not, we would. Uh, yes, Commissioner Olson. Uh, thanks, Chair Lewis. Um, just a, a comment. Um, uh, I personally have been impressed with the service that we've gotten from Baker Tilly, and uh, we, there's no question that in the last several years, uh, this Bloomington HRA has gone uh, through some some changes in direction. You mentioned the uh, uh, OHO. Uh, uh, Housing ordinance and uh, uh, and just that one move uh, with uh, with Aon uh, was a real coup, I think, in terms of us being able to get uh, a lot of affordable housing in one fell swoop. And uh, there was a lot of uh, time, a lot of action required in a short amount of time. So. Uh, I don't know if big overtime was built into that, maybe or not, but uh, I, I'm I'm impressed with Baker Tilly, and and I think they've served us well. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Hearing none, I would be looking for two motions. The first motion would be to approve the budget for year 2022. Do I hear a motion? I, I move to approve the budget for year 2022. All right. Uh, is there a second? Second. Thank you. It has been moved by Commissioner Who came with a second by Commissioner Thorson to approve the budget for year 2022 pursuant to MSA section 469.033 subdivision 6 for the Housing and Redevelopment Authority in and for the City of Bloomington. May we have the roll call vote, please? Bologa. Aye. Hughim. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Olson. Aye. Thorson. Aye. Motion passed five to zero. Thank you. Now I would be looking for a motion to approve the resolution establishing the tax levies for year 2022. Do I hear a motion? Commissioner Olson uh, moves that we approve the resolution establishing the tax levies for year 2022 for the Housing and Redevelopment Authority in and for the City of Bloomington. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. It has been moved by Commissioner Olson with a second by Commissioner Hukim to approve the resolution establishing the tax levies for year 2022 for the HRA in and for the City of Bloomington. May we have the roll call vote, please? Beloga. Hugheim. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Olson. Aye. Thorson. Aye. Motion passed five to zero. Thank you. Moving on to item 5.3, HRA board composition memo. Uh, may we have the staff report, please? 
Thank you, Chair Lewis. So at the last um, regular meeting on October 26th of the HRA, commissioners discussed board composition and requested that staff draft a memo to Bloomington Mayor and City Council requesting support for two items. The first item is a legislative request to increase board size from five to seven commissioners in the 2022 legislative agenda, and two, creating a council member liaison position. I uh, drafted the memo and reviewed by general counsel of the HRA and attached as the memo for discussion and approval. Um, I will say that the ability to request the support and possibly receive the support from the mayor and city council about creating a council member liaison position would move forward the ability to um, potentially appoint two resident members that are currently um, applications in instead of one resident member and a council member. As we all know that the mayor appoints and the city council approves, and so it still is up to the mayor of Bloomington to make that decision. Uh, but that would be a possibility um, with this suggestion and support for the time being while we wait to see if the legislature would approve our increase of the board from five to seven commissioners. Are there any questions for staff? For actually Administrator Coleman. <laughs> um, hearing none, um, do I hear a motion to approve the resolution approving the memorandum to City of Bloomington Mayor, City Council, and City Manager recommending changes to the composition of the HRA Board of Commissioners of the HRA? We're a quiet bunch. Chair Lewis? <laughs> yes, Commissioner Olson. Thank you. Um, I, I move the motion as stated. Thank you. Is there a second? Not hearing a second. We will be unable. Yes, Commissioner Hukim. I would like to be honest, and with the position that I'm in right now, I would like to abstain from this. Right. So I understand. That is why I will not pass a second. You're not now. putting it, not a second. I apologize. Um, that's okay. I don't know. Can I second the motion? Not hearing a second, we won't be able to bring it up for a vote. No, I'll second it. All right. All right, I think that's good. That will be uh, the decision by council. So it has been moved by Commissioner Olson with a second by Commissioner Thorson to approve the resolution approving memorandum to the City of Bloomington Mayor, City Council, and City Manager recommending changes to the composition of the HRA Board of Commissioners of the HRA. May we have the roll call vote, please? Do you want to call for discussion? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. I want to open it up to discussion because I think there is probably some room for discussion. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes, Commissioner Beloga. Uh, I will not support that motion because of uh, the previous objections I've had uh, and voiced with the council member liaison position. I, um, I think that uh, if you watched the city council meeting last night, uh, there was a discussion about uh, uh, whether or not uh, council members as non-voting members is appropriate. And while there was limited discussion on that, um, I think it's an item that uh, needs further discussion by the council, but um, I cannot uh, support that because I wouldn't either as a commissioner or a council member. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Beloga. I appreciate your comments. Are there any other? Uh, yes, Administrator Coleman. Were you? <laughs> Thank you, Chair Lewis. Um, I would like to add that the Port Authority does have the seat for a council member and the mayor. They are seven member commission. And therefore, I think it would be um, something that could be discussed that increasing to seven members, we could essentially create 
a council member seat, thereby they would be a commissioner, but the term would be the term of a council member instead of what it is currently where we have the terms are all five years and they may be filled by a council member. Just like increasing to seven members, there is a requirement in state statute that we must fill the seat with a resident um, that participates in the Housing Choice Voucher Program. We could change the bylaws to do the same thing after increasing to seven members where we would have five resident members, a a member that has received or is receiving programs through the HRA, and a council member seat that would be the term of the council member's elected office. Yes, Commissioner Thorson. I'm sorry, Commissioner Belogas. We, we look so much alike. <laughs> <laughs> See, when they move the chairs closer together, I tell you. Uh, and and uh, that is uh, the term of the council member's representation. Uh, John uh, needed to go off when uh, he his term expired in I will go off uh, the HRA when my term expires. So, um, you know, it, it is concurrent with the uh, appointed member's term on council. I'm sorry, are you asking a question? or you? No, that's a comment. Oh, okay. It would be. Currently, we're not like that. Yes, we are. Are we? We've been doing. Yeah, we've we, been. we are and have been throughout time, actually. In the bylaws that we updated, it says it may be filled by a council member. And so essentially that one year, if it's not the same term, if it's a five-year term and it's... If it's a five-year term and it's not the same term as the elected office, then there's a one-year break that we need to fill. Correct? Well, it's been, it's been filled by a council member... Succe you know, in sequence. In succession. Right, in succession. So thereby, thereby it has ended up being that way, but in the bylaws it's not written that way is what I'm saying. And I'm saying write it that way if we move to seven members where it's a council member seat. Right now we don't have council member seats. We've just been filling them with council members. And, and that may be the case, but each year's the council member is appointed or reappointed for their term in office. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm hearing and So there may be a difference between our bylaws and what's the what's operation. Happening. Yes. And so and, and I would say then that is a really good if we can when if we go to seven members, that would be a really opportune time to make sure our bylaws actually reflect what we're doing because it is it is confusing and like when we're talking about it we all understand what's been happening but it's not what's reflected in the bylaws so that makes it a little confusing so that would give us an opportunity at that point to actually bring our bylaws and everything up to date with seven member board that is still to be seen a uh, question for commissioner beloga so uh, the city Council every year has sort of the annual meeting where they appoint people to different commissions and boards and so on. Um, do they each year um, choose the person who will serve currently on the HRA? Yes. So they, in theory, they could change it. You uh, a year uh, ago, you might have said, um, you know, I no longer interested in serving on the HRA board. They they pick another, or the council could have just picked another uh, can, uh, council member to serve on the HRA board, that, that but that is, is something the council does annually. Uh, and that's true for all council member appointments to boards and commissions. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Um, yes, Administrator Coleman. Thank you, Chair Lewis. I just had one last thing. Because it's not in the bylaws and because it's not written, as, excuse me, written as a council member's seat, we advertise two seats to the public. And so residents have applied under the understanding that there are two seats available that they could apply for, not that there's a one seat available and a council member seat. So that's the other thing that I'm looking at is that how are we communicating that to the public on what's actually available? Uh, yes, Commissioner Olson. Thank you, Chair Lewis. Um, uh, in terms of the process, this is a memo 
uh, to the mayor, city council, city manager, indicating a change that, uh, two changes actually, that we, we would propose to them uh, that they would have to um, um, ultimately rule on one way or the other. Um, when a while ago, I was thinking that it would be good maybe to separate out the two uh, because they are, uh, one is actually referring to uh, asking our lobbyists to present this to the legislature, and the other one is, is an in-city kind of thing. Um, but I think process-wise, what this memo is doing is putting two, two issues on the, on the table of the council to, uh, to consider. And, and I don't know to what extent um, they may read our minutes uh, about the, uh, the reasons that we are proposing these, but um, I, I would uh, hope that the council would um, um, ask questions of us or ask um, somehow to get input about why we are saying this. Uh, in terms of the first one, <clears throat> I have long uh, been concerned about the fact that the HRA traditionally does not have and may never have in recent time uh, a voice um, uh, from the people that we are primarily serving. And, and I, we've, we've talked a lot about affordable housing. Uh, we also, uh, uh, and I'm not going to uh, put all uh, put uh, salt in the gas tank or whatever this is. But um, I, I think that uh, it would be good for us. I think we've had business input, uh, whether or not it's the, the, the smaller businesses or, or the larger businesses that, that we, we interact with them a lot when, when they come forward with a proposal. But in terms of uh, the redevelopment of the business community in aging structures, that's something that I think would, we need to develop a process for getting input from them as well. So uh, back to the main issue I'm saying here is that I think we are, we are, not, we are asking for the, the council to put this on their discussion uh, agenda and uh, I, if the, the letter um, I, I think probably appropriately assumes that once it's in their, their court, then they decide how they gather information about it. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm in support of doing this. I, I, I like the idea that, uh, that you mentioned, uh, uh, Manager Coleman, about if we do move to seven, that we would end up um, having the opportunity to designate one as a council member. And that's, I don't believe that's in the memo. Or it, it's, it's not in the memo. Yeah. So, um, no. I mean, that's just one example that's major in terms of, you know, the council deciding what is HR up to on, with this, you know. Yep. So I, I, I think and, uh, council member Beloga is a longtime uh, city council member as well. Uh, can you, and, and currently, uh, can you... Um, can you give an idea of how the council may respond to this in terms of a procedure? I, I, uh, I can't. I mean, that's, that's asking me to be a mind reader for six other people. And, Don't have your and crystal I, ball. I, I, I won't try to go there. I mean, right. um, but uh, while I have the floor, uh, Erna, thank you for putting on the uh, uh, bylaws, and you'll see that in reading item three, mm -hmm. uh, we are complying with the bylaws. So what I'm saying is may. <laughs> it's a small word, but it means a lot. It says that any city council member of the city of Bloomington may be appointed and may serve as a commissioner. It doesn't say it will, which it means it does not create a council member seat, which means that we advertised two seats at a five-year term. That's what, it's a I, small I word. I understood what yeah. you said. Okay. Yeah. But uh, on the flip side of that, 
is, is that if you are really promoting this, uh, second paragraph about a dedicated liaison from the council, you don't define what their role is, and I presume it's non-voting. It has to be if that's what they are, and I think that's an important issue. Mm -hmm. And then it's not in compliance with the bylaws that you've got. The bylaws would have to change if there is any change from the city, from the mayor and city council regarding yep. this memo. The bylaws would have to change regardless. Um, and I would like to say when I read this, I view ultimately, I think the best thing that could happen would be the ability to expand us to seven members. I look at the, I want to say the item regarding the city council member being a, the designated liaison. I see that more as an interim um, solution in order to allow two resident members rather than just one resident member but you know that that is just the way I'm looking at it. I'm looking at that as we do that. I'm I'm hoping that we can get on the legislative agenda, and I don't see necessarily why going to seven members should be a problem. And then I think that will take care of. We would have a voting. You could have a voting council member, and that would take care of part of our issue. So I think the memo should be updated. Yes. To yeah, better reflect absolutely. what the board would like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, Commissioner Olson. Thank you, Chair Lewis. And I, I want to be very clear that uh, regarding a council member, I, I you know, um, council members vote on things that we vote on. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's a, a double vote there in a sense. But uh, if, it, if, if there are seven members, uh, then that's, diluted some but regardless or regardless of that um, I think it's important that we have um, a, a, a significant engagement with the council at our meetings in terms of, of um, uh, answers that council member uh, uh, commissioner Beloga has has offered about the council is currently doing this or currently doing that or looking into this. And, and so uh, um, I, I, I think the rewording of, of the, of the um, in fact, I guess I would recommend that, that it includes something about um, maybe make, make the second one contingent on if, if the uh, legislature does approve a seven um, member uh, Commission that one would be designated to the the council somehow communicate that. Thank you. So, Chair Lewis, yes. Can I ask that this be tabled to the next meeting, I and I bring an updated version for discussion and approval by the HRA board? And I was just going to add, suggest that we table this item until you can make those adjustments. Um, can I? We move to table. Correct. There's a motion on the floor right now. There's okay. a motion on the floor, and it's been seconded. All right. Um, can we have the roll call vote? Uh, further discussion, perhaps? Oh, further discussion. On, on the idea of tabling it? Yeah. Um, I would suggest, and just as kind of my knee-jerk reaction, but <laughs> that we pr proceed with a memo and only include uh, the item for including in the 2022 legislative agenda uh, that we uh, seek an increase in the board and leave the dedicated council member out of the picture for now. I think it is important to, to uh, send to the council our, our interest in seeing the board expand and get on that legislative agenda. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the council is already discussing different roles and um, liaison roles and so on this is that the second one is not something I felt super strongly about I see positives and negatives for each and as we talk about you know wanting to make sure that the council members engaged well the best way to engage them might be you know a voting role but that's for further discussion so I would uh, I would suggest we just move along with the memo 
with uh, just the first bullet point. That's the first bullet point. Um, all right. Um, Myra, what motion I'm right now, motion on the floor is to table, is that correct? Nope, the motion's to approve. To approve. It's been, a se it's been and seconded. And it's been amended. Okay. It's been approved and seconded, seconded, and now it's being amended. All right. So I would call for the vote on the amended. Um, yeah, the second right. second amendment. Mm -hmm. Second amendment. All right. Commissioner Beloga has his hand up. Ah, uh, yes, Commissioner Beloga. Oh, uh, I was just going to add that uh, I don't think that the initial uh, mover of the motion nor the seconder has approved the amendment. Right. Okay, so that's it, it wouldn't, shouldn't we just let the, that motion die and have a new motion? I mean, to, amending a motion to table and then adding an amendment. It, we seem like we're over, uh, we're over motion, we're over moving. Um, so, so you can vote on the first motion and second it, and it. Yeah. And then you can vote there isn't on the amendment. Been a motion to table. I cannot. You can't make a motion, make a motion right, while there's one already. Motion. Okay, we don't have a motion to table. Yeah, I can't we had a motion. <laughs> the motion on the floor was to accept as the way it was. All right, then we could amend it. That's my my. Um, Correct. My All right. So, um, Commissioner Olson, did you move it originally? And yes, I moved originally. Um, and is there a process uh, Roberts uh, accepts about with withdrawing a motion by the maker? Mm -hmm. hey, that that's what I would do. I'd like to uh, withdraw my motion to approve uh, the motion that was in front of us. Mm -hmm. okay. So and now the second so accepts that. All right, and therefore I would make a motion to send the memo um, to the city council as drafted uh, with only the full, uh, first bullet point regarding the uh, legislative uh, agenda and removing the bullet point regarding uh, uh, the council um, uh, role on the commission. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Olson, oh, second. second. Oh. Oh. I saw Commissioner Beloga's hand first. Is that no, I, I, I thought John was moving it, so I was just wanting to raise a, a point to the. All right, well, I will. Okay, it was moved by Commissioner Thorson with a second by Commissioner Olson to approve the memo with the second bullet point removed. Mm -hmm. um, I will now open it up for discussion. Uh, Commissioner Beloga. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in the last paragraph, there is uh, language regarding the council member uh, liaison, mm -hmm. and I, I think uh, I would leave that uh, to the maker of the motion as to what he wanted to do with that. Yes, remove the the uh, my motion would include removing the. My motion would include removing the um, uh, items in the last paragraph that have to do with the uh, second bullet point. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other um, items of discussion before we move this to a vote? Hearing none, um, we, there's a motion on the floor to approve the resolution of the memorandum to the city of Bloomington Mayor, City Council, and City Manager recommending changes to the composition of the HRA Board of Commissioners with only item one. Um, may we have the roll call vote, please? Loga. Aye. Hoogheem. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Olson. Aye. Sorry, Olson. Aye. Aye. Thorson. Aye. Motion passed five to zero. Thank you. And Should thank you. Lewis? Yes. Administrator a, Coleman. So I have a question to the board. I would like some direction because we have four applications for two seats that were advertised. Is there any um, recommendation or conversation with the board about how to go about those applications because the city council changed the process to include that applications would be received and then interviews would be held and the HRA is at the position of being able to make recommendations administrator, chair, 
as well as other staff to interview those four applicants and then make recommendations to fill the two vacancies. With this memo, removing the second part, is there direction provided to us around how do we do that? Are we only making one recommendation and dependent and depending on the mayor to appoint a city council member? Or are we making two recommendations? Chair Lewis, Hi. I would suggest a ranking of the candidates. Uh, it is, again, up to the council to decide who to appoint. And if, um, if there is some kind of a first and second choice or however it seems fit, um, that seems to get around the issue and allow uh, the council to do what, uh, what is their prerogative. Are there any other suggestions? That seems like a sound. I think that's the, the logical way to do it. Point of clarification. Uh, Did you say ranking of all the candidates, of all four? Ranking of the non-council candidates. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Olson, were you going to? Uh, thank you. Just a uh, clarification. Um, uh, Manager Coleman, what what what's the process? Would it would it be that we would do a ranking, or that uh, the manager and the chair of the of the HRA would do that? So there is a committee to interview that includes the chair of the HRA, myself, as well as other members of city staff and or um, board liaisons okay. to interview all of the candidates. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move on to discussion items and item 6.1, housing improvement area, the HIA policy revision. May we have the staff report, please? Thank you, Chair Lewis. So the city is reviewing and, rev and revising its housing improvement area policy and approval process. The HRA has the responsibility of reviewing applications and making recommendations to the city council on a per project basis. Attached are the draft revisions for the policy and approval process that are in city legal review and going before the city council for adoption on November 15th, 2021. After city council adoption, the policy and approval process will come before the HRA board for adoption. Um, and so what is attached is uh, the policy draft revision, um, which was reviewed and revised by city staff, HRA staff, city, uh, the chief CFO, bond council, general counsel for the HRA and legal counsel for the city. Um, so the policy uh, reviewing that and revising it to make uh, clear the roles that the HRA and or the city have, that this is the city's policy, that the HRA has a responsibility of administering components of it. Uh, as well as a clear um, indication of the approval process, so adding an extra document that outlines the approval process for applicants, as well as property standards. Um, the property standards are the standards in which uh, environmental health, building and inspections, and planning have reviewed and put together and commented on that if any uh, financing is going into a HIA project that these are the minimum standards in which they must abide by. So I wanted to, because this is a lot, I wanted to bring it before you just so you have to review. This is not the final document because it is going through a legal review, but I did wanna bring it before you so you at least knew and saw um, what is being looked at and will be voted on by the HRA board after the city council um, adopts or makes changes and adopts revisions. I go by Thorson too. <laughs> I know, now I've got you, you're one person. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, do we have a red line copy? I, I'm curious as to what's changed. So um, we don't have a red line copy to provide just yet. <laughs> what has changed, um, number one, is laying out uh, responsibility of the HRA. So that was not previously written that way. Uh, it was written as authority, um, but it's called out as responsibility. So 
number three, excuse me, uh, 3.01. And then um, eligible uses did not change. And then under number section five, HIA approval criteria, um, some of the things that changed in here were um, one under E, that um, 20 years or less was always in there, but there was a comment in there that the financing would only be for 10 to 15 years. And that was removed to allow for a greater time frame, um, which allows for it to not be as um, as expensive. Also, um, calling out um, in Section E that the annual fee to the to the owners must be affordable as to not cause an economic hardship. That was not in there previously. Uh, also saying that the city has the sole discretion to determine the sources of financing and sources other than issuing bonds may be used. Those are all changes that allow for a little bit more um, flexibility. One of the other big changes was that allowing um, construction financing. Uh, temporary construction financing. That was not previously allowed under the HIA policy, uh, which made it a little bit difficult for associations. And then um, 65%, we increased the minimum percentage from 60, from 60% 60 of all property owners um, in the petition of support to apply for the HIA financing to 65%. And then the last things are the increase in the application fee, the application fee was $500. Um, all the other application fees for Affordable Housing Trust Fund, TIF, is $5,000. And so the CFO did ask for continuity. And so there's an increase to $5,000 application fee and a $15,000 deposit to cover city incurred fees, a uh, city and or HRA incurred fees. Um, Previously, it was $7,500 or 1% of the total project cost. So for continuity, that changed. And then lastly is item J. Um, more detailed information about the requirement of a third party, independent third party um, reserve, re reserve study, financial plan, reserve plan, as well as more information on how the association will be able to sustain beyond um, the HIA financing. Those are the changes outside of the two new documents, which is the approval process and the property standards. Um, thank you, uh, Administrator Coleman. I, I do wonder if it's worthy of having... Um, an additional item saying something about, um, you know, there's there's the uh, Town Home Association that has applied for HIA that has been rejected and continues to uh, seek definitive reasons and understanding why they were rejected. And, and uh, it really is that the amount of the loan exceeds the value of the, you know, uh, economic value of the properties. And uh, there's no clarity resolution in this document to that set of circumstances, which may be a one-time unique set of circumstances, at least hopefully it is. Um, is, is that uh, worthy of adding to this? Thank you, Chair and, Lewis. And you don't need to respond to that now. Oh, oh I Give have a response. Thoughts, or you may already have. We have thought about it and talked about it. So, um, one, I uh, have definitely reached out to that association um, to request um, a meeting with the owners. We're, uh, there was a letter that was sent. We don't know. I don't know. Excuse me. I've been here a year. I don't know where that letter went if all the owners got that letter and understood what the basis was, and there have been new owners. Secondly, they are more than eligible to apply under the if approved revised HIA program and policy. Uh, three, there are, are alternatives that the city would consider outside of the direct um, proposed 
fix that that association has. So there's both things happening. We're trying to reach out and contact and talk with the owners and just say, hey, let's answer some of your questions and let's clear some things up. But also, here's a here's a policy that we are proposing being revised and you're more than welcome to apply because there are differences in these proposed changes that were not there previously for that um, property. So do we think that uh, under the set of circumstances that they applied in their financial condition, that they could be approved under this proposed amendment? I can't say that. I do not know. Because uh, that would... Uh, um, alter my position relative to my feelings on this document? I, I honestly cannot say um, that from my understanding was a couple of years ago and there have been updated um, engineering reports and information as well as there has been a, a change of ownership in quite a few of those units. So I cannot say. Thank you. Um, Manager Coleman, is this, um, this is a work in progress that you said. And so what is uh, uh, the timeline that is anticipated or hoped for? Thank you, Chair Lewis, Commissioner Olson. So as a work in progress, the timeline that I am anticipating is going before the City Council on November 15th if approved, coming before the HRA on the 23rd, if approved, opening up for application on the 29th of November. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions since this is just a discussion item? Any other comments for Administrator Coleman? Um, hearing question, none. Question on this uh, um, timeline. Yes, Commissioner um, Given that this is going to the City Council first, Let's say the city council approves it, it comes to our board, and there's one or more aspects we don't care for, and we don't approve it, or we ask for changes. What's, a, what's the, I mean, would it have to go back to council? Is council the final, um, the final say on it? In which case, um, shouldn't the HRA board see it first and then go to council so the council can take our... Uh, recommendation and the consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Lewis, Commissioner Thorson. So I wanted to bring it before the HRA board um, because the HRA administers it, but it is a city, city policy. And the authority granted by the state statute is with the city of Bloomington. So when this policy was approved previously, it came before the HRA board, but it was approved by the city correct, Brian, or was it approved by HRA? It was a, it was a, um, a recommended approval, of, excuse me, a recommended approval, a recommended approval by the HRA board was sent to the, the council. Okay, so it was a recommendation. Yep. So ultimately, so, so ultimately it is the city council, but if there are changes under which, I would think if there are changes under which where the, it has to do with the HRA administration of it, the City Council's approving the policy, so overall, but the administration of it is through the HRA, which was a part of some of these revisions, was to better understand whose role is where. And so are there any recommendations? This was a part of the reason I wanted to get it before you, because do you have any thoughts or recommendations or ideas or things that you would like incorporated or seen or better clarified? As far as our administration, the HRA's mm -hmm. administration of the plan. Again, I'll just comment that it seems backwards to me. Uh, and uh, this has been presented to us tonight as a discussion item. And, um, you know, there's potential for the council to, to take a direction that really finalizes it without our input. Um, mm -hmm. So I just make the comment that it seems a bit awkward. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I would say it, it's a fairly tight timeline, I guess, too, as well. Um, reviewing this and then making comments, it would, 
it would feel like we should make comments and then have another opportunity to see it and then have it go to consul. So I feel like the timeline, mm -hmm. it's like we missed a piece. Okay. Um, and I, I understand why it's been done the way it has, but um, I do feel like any comments we made tonight would be, I don't know how much everyone's had to review it. So I would say this one has been, and Mr. Hartman can chime in because he's been working on it. This one has been a lot um, <laughs> because staff was working on it before I got here, and it really came down to city legal and city finance on what they wanted to see and, and uh, what they understood and what they knew about other things that it impacted with the city. So I think this one has been a really interesting process. Um, Mr. Hartman, can I ask you as far as determining um, what the HRA, the, the administration that we do, um, is that what staff has been working on? I mean, as far as, because now this document is basically outlining our administration. Is that what you've been working on? And uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, yeah, yes, um, that and a little bit more. You know, we have, this was originally adopted, I believe, in 2014 as a policy. Um, the City Council had requested the HRA ad um, work and adopt an HI or propose an HI uh, policy for their adoption um, prior to that. And we completed one project, um, the Sutton Place 2 townhome project, maybe you remember that back in 2018. Um, we learned a lot through that process and we um, sat with city legal, finance, Baker Tilly and others, um, HRA council and determined that we should really take a strong look at this to make some re revisions. And that process has, was, you know, took uh, uh, quite a bit of time and this is the final product of that process. And it was really um, 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 through the efforts of uh, uh, um, Administrator Coleman to kind of push it through and, and get us to this point and appreciate that very much. I did miss one thing. Um, it was heavy on staff and there was a lot that staff needed to administer. And with some of these changes, we are requiring that an association have a independent, dedicated third party project manager. That was something that HRA staff had to bear and it was quite a bit. And now with these changes, um, removing some of that heavy lift off of the HRA staff to someone that is specialized in that area to work dedicated on that project because the HRA staff could have more than one project of HIA at a time, as well as other staff do other duties. So that is also a big change here. All right, that's, uh, yes, Commissioner Olson. Thank you, uh, Chair Lewis. Um, <clears throat> I, I, don't, I don't wanna micromanage um, and I can't, I don't think we as a group can. And so it sounds to me like, like the proper staff across uh, several organizations, including HRA staff, have had input into this for some time, are responding to experiences uh, that, that suggested changes that we are now uh, in the process of uh, getting finalized for this time around. The part that, that uh, puzzles me is that our, uh, we are responsible for reviewing applications and making recommendations to the city council on a per project basis. So it's like we are the ones who are gonna be applying the policy and are we the only ones that can move it forward, uh, a project forward? No, no, not in these changes. So in, in- No, I mean in terms of the projects. In terms of saying, yes, it should go forward. The project should go the forward. Project. A particular project. A particular yes, project. so they submit the application. Staff will review that, and the application or a summary thereof would come to the HRA board. Right. From there, the HRA board can make a recommendation to approve or deny. If it ends in a tie, it automatically goes to the city council for approval or, or denial. 
if you deny, they still can go to the city council for on a, a what we would call an appeal process. That was not in there before either. Okay. So yes, as the HRA board, that's your that is the responsibility granted. And, and we do that for OHO and a whole range of programs. And so it, it almost seems to me like I'm fine with all of this except the last statement. <laughs> After the city council adoption, the policy and approval process will come before the HRA for adoption. It sounds to me like it's more of an informational thing for us about what we are being asked to administer. Our, our 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 role in administrating uh, part of it, and and and, and and I don't know that it means anything uh, other, than, but if the council adopts, normally this, mm -hmm. as uh, Commissioner Thorson mentioned, it's backwards because normally we make a recommendation to the city and then they respond, and and it's a done deal because they have more power than we do. Yep. You know, and that's appropriate. So uh, the, the adoption is done. Why would it come back to us, uh, except as information? So that is me trying, and probably the execution is off. When I looked at this before, there was nothing that said the, there was like, there was no resolution that said the HRA approved this policy. What I, what I was able to see was the policy was proposed with a demonstration project. So it wasn't the policy by itself. So when I looked at it, I was trying to say, where can I make sure the HRA is coming in? And so my execution is off on trying to have the HRA have a voice there and say, we approve this because as I got into it and I understood it was the city's policy, then I put the HRA second instead of putting the HRA first. Uh, Chair Lewis, uh, yes, um, you know, Larson. we should be, if nothing else, a policy board, and we should approve policy before it goes forward. Mm -hmm. And um, when it's happened in the past, it's made me very uncomfortable that when we go through this kind of backwards process here. Um, and um, so I, I would recommend that that we. Um, uh, we're in hopes that we could uh, finalize our recommendation at our next meeting and have it go on to council. And um, I'm just wondering what the uh, timing issue would be there um, because this is backwards. We are a policy board and if we don't set policy, and I feel the same about um, you know changes to the uh, loan programs. That was a policy decision that should have come before the board. and and. Uh, I'm uncomfortable seeing this kind of approach we're seem to be taking. I would have to check with the CFO, the city manager, and the executive leadership team um, because this is something that is being asked, has been asked for and followed. Um, and with the budgetary process and the council's agenda that's already set, I don't know what the implications would be if it doesn't go forward as it is already planned on the agenda next Monday. I would have to find out. And I, I do have a question for Administrator Coleman. Um, even if it did come before us and we, for whatever reason, made changes to it or suggested changes to it, ours would just simply be a recommendation, correct? Um, when it went to council, mm -hmm. they, they would that is the correct. ultimate decision. It would so be a recommendation. We could recommend changes that we, if we wanted them, but we would not be able to set policy because that would be done by the council on this particular program that it's a city program so they set policy so i understand we're being asked to review it <clears throat> but we don't we essentially don't approve it uh yes commissioner olson thank you chair lewis um i want to follow up on what commissioner thorson said um in terms of us being a policy committee, uh, commission uh, body. And, and so this really fits into identity uh, that we've talked about for years. And that is uh, to what extent do we have authority and to what extent do we not? And this really clouds the issue uh, even more. Um, and I would, 
moving forward. I mean, if we want this to, to happen, uh, the 15th is soon. So it, it's going to have to go, go on. But I think as we move into the future, it's important that the council and uh, administration teams, executive or whatever uh, w process, that, that we are um, have some kind of a study session or something where the staff uh, that's working on this, like you said, for years, would end up having um, a study session with us and say, this is the big framework that we are looking at and we want you to be aware and um, uh, agree with, with that direction uh, as we go forward. Not that we, we can stop the whole thing because obviously the city council is, is part of that process too, but um, it, it's just another example of where um, we're, we're, we're not involved in the processes in meaningful ways uh, until it's too late. Um, I, I think the one word I put, I wrote down is, as Commissioner Olson was talking, um, we don't, we're not always given the opportunity to put our input in before it goes to the second level, like it goes to the council. In this item, I can understand city program, they view it as their decision. It does affect the HRA. And because of that, it does feel like it's a little backwards because it's like, okay, you can read this, but then the city council will approve it. And if you, it'll come back to us and we may not um, agree with everything that they have approved. But I think it does come down to just getting the HRA's input. I guess this has kind of gone to a slightly higher, a different level what I'm discussing now, but what Commissioner Olson said, um, there are times when it feels like we're not being asked what we feel is appropriate as a board as far as like a program coming through. And then somewhere down the line, we're asked to approve it or we're asked to, okay, this is what you have now, you can change it. It just feels like sometimes no one's asking our opinion. <laughs> it's simple as I can say. It just no one asks what we think. And I know that's not necessarily the administration or your staff, but it, that's what it sometimes feels like. Um, Commissioner Beloga, or Thorson, as I'm calling you. <laughs> <laughs> also known as. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that in uh, thinking about this, and, and we've done precious few of these, so I may be off uh, course on this. But the original ones that we have done were then uh, assessed to the individual property owners, and that is no longer what I see. Oh, it's in there. Is Yes, that's a part of the basis of an HIA. Because I see that, uh, you know, we have the ability to issue bonds and so forth for this. Yes. So As opposed to assessing it. So that is still in there. And it's um, called out where um, the association has to propose how they want to split that up amongst the property owners. So it's still in there because that's how it works with an HIA. Why, why is there the discussion in here about issuance of bonds then? That's what an HIA, has. we have used bonds in the past for Sutton Place, right? That was Sutton Place too, that we use bonds. The city did. And so that's a part of the, the discussion with the chief, well, if we the use CFO. bonds, then we won't have assessed it. Madam Chair, um, Commissioner Beloga, just for a point of clarification, um, the way the, the HIA is financially structured is that um, the city provides the capital up front for the project, uh, either through a bond issuance. I, I got it. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. And then that's the repayment of source for the bonds. Correct. Correct. With interest and fees. All right. 
Any any other comments? Any and questions? and because of that, just to to kind of close the loop on it, I think all of these have to go to council because they have to be able to do the assessment and city council is the only body who has the authority to do assessments. Correct. There's multiple places it has to go to city council um, and there's a whole statutory veto period. There, there's a lot with it, yes. There. Thank you. I, I just had to think <laughs> through and work through. And like I said, it's been quite a while since this is. Uh, that's, that's okay. You're allowed to think. You mm -hmm. allowed to think aloud. <laughs> yes. Are there any other comments, Commissioner Olson? Thank you. I, I would just like to, because this has um, come up as an issue before. As you said, it's kind of like we're an afterthought or something like that. Um, I, I'm wondering if it would be. Um, productive and maybe timely uh, relatively soon to request uh, the city manager and mayor, for example, to uh, spend some time with us uh, talking about uh, how they perceive the HRA in terms of the role in the overall thing and how we fit into the, um, the huge operation that is a city government. Um, and I don't know if other members would uh, feel the same way, but um, I've, I've heard different things about the HRA, and, um, and sometimes they don't jibe with, with um, operations. And uh, it might be that, that I believe that the HRA has, by statute, um, more authority than, than what the city seems to be giving us, um, but I, 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 I'm, I'm open to, to how that would shake out. But I think it would be helpful if, because the, the mayor and the, and the city manager are, are so um, instrumental in how operations happen, that uh, 20 minutes or something, that they do a presentation and some dialogue or whatever. So, dialogue. So, uh, Commissioner Olson, I will say from my limited time here, my understanding, my perception is that one, the HRA is a separate entity, right? And has ap operated as such. With the passage and the adoption of the OHO and the Affordable Housing Trust Fund is where a lot of this has started to be created, where it's where is the HRA's role? When the HRA operated as a completely separate entity over the programs that were still over, and we still do, there wasn't as much confusion. Now, with the OHO being a city ordinance, but the, the administration of it's with this, the HRA and who makes what, who says what, who, you know, that's where I think this is starting to come in, because, and I'm hearing the same thing with HIA. And so I think this is fairly newer um, and more of an understanding as the city is growing, where do we all fit and how do we all do it? How do we do development? And this is a development. Mm -hmm. How do we do development, which is an assessment that will be coming, um, that includes the HRA, the Port Authority, because they have there's some questions there too, and the city. How do we do development? And I think that a part of that assessment will be better defining roles and understanding and bringing that information back. Uh, thank you, uh, Manager Coleman. That's well stated in terms of what uh, I feel is, is a beginning to better understanding of roles. And so if, if the city manager and mayor or whoever can come, I'd like to hear it. Uh, uh, I have a lot of respect for you and your knowledge and, and how you're doing things and so forth. So it's not that. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to hear it from the people who are um, making those big decisions on behalf of the city, uh, not being aware of what you just said. And, and if there are some ways that are reasonable in terms of time expenditure and so forth, uh, that we can... Uh, uh, be involved in the process such as the one we're talking about right now um, then I think um, you know and, and maybe it's not the whole commission maybe it's you know it's like 
at one point uh, we weren't involved in in any way uh, in selecting the new administrator mm -hmm. who you now are and I think that really um, uh, I don't know what the right word is but it it didn't feel good at all <laughs> uh, I mean if we're if we're going to be working with somebody on such a regular basis as the um, um, HRA administrator, shouldn't we have some input into the kind of qualities that we're looking for, you know, at that way back at that stage? Uh -huh. And I think there's been some improvement with that, but that's, that's not another example of, of what I refer to as an identity issue. Okay, well, Com Commissioner Olson, can I, I just kind of want to pull us back in a little bit to what we should, <coughs> we're discussing now. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Who came? Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to kind of summarize kind of what I've heard and what I kind of, I guess, more of what I feel. And I, I agree with people on the fact that it would it would be nice to, I think it helps the city council too when we recommend something. I do think that they take the HRA board and the HRA staff and their recommendations very seriously. And I mean, that is why we have boards and commissions, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I do think that just in the future that we can, you know, it's not saying that we're approving it. We're just to have that recommendation. I don't think anybody right now feels that we can, we've had that time to make that recommendation. And I do think that's just the important part of the process that, that's missing. And that's kind of what I'm hearing. So I just wanted to kind of summarize maybe, and hopefully we can now um, move on, but just, just state that I do think our recommendation does have impact. And, and also on that, just to quickly say that then, I do feel like then we have that opportunity to attend the council meeting and show our support as well in person and or via, you know, online and stuff like that. I think that that's very important as well. So I do appreciate this information ahead of time. I just wish it was a little bit mm -hmm. sooner so we could have a little bit more recommenda formal recommendation to the council on this I issue. Think, I, I think you've summed it up really, really well. That mm -hmm. was a good summary because it just felt like we didn't have enough time. Yep. Understood. And that's hard. And Thank as far you. as to Commissioner Olson's comments, um, maybe down the road we could do some kind of a study session where we could have more people from the city, whether it's the city manager or the mayor, and we could sit down in a study session and talk and, you know, kind of find out where we all fit because I think everybody has their own ideas where we fit. And I, I find as a board we've become much more active and because of that, we now want, we want to be more involved. And so, yes, it would be helpful to know exactly where we fit into things and to make sure that we have the opportunity to speak up when we feel like we should speak up. So a study session might be, okay. yes, Commissioner, um, <laughs> I'm doing it again, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you pointed at me. That was All right, enough. Commissioner Beloga, I Thank know you. who you are. Really, I do. <laughs> So uh, in hearing all the comments, which I concur with, uh, would it be appropriate for me, would it be the will of this commission to ask counsel on the meeting of next Monday to table this item uh, to allow for further review by the uh, uh, HRA Board of Commissioners so that we can provide a recommendation to the uh, city council at that time. I, I think that would be a very Thank good you. idea. Thank you for your willingness to do that. I think that would be appropriate, okay. and I think yes, that's it why it's important to have a council liaison <laughs> as well. <laughs> he, just, he just proved his worth. <laughs> but, it, but it is good because he is the one person who can go to the city council and ask them to give us more time. So... Thank you, Commissioner Beloga. See, I got it right that time. <laughs> it's been a long night, guys. <laughs> um, is there any more discussion on this item? I think I think Commissioner Beloga has just taken care of everything. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we will now move on to item 6.2. Again, it's a discussion item. That is the 2022 staff services contract. May we have the staff report, please? Thank you, um, Chair Lewis. Uh, annually, the HRA enters into a staff services agreement. Attached for review is the draft agreement for 2022 that is currently going through city legal review. It has gone through HRA general counsel review. 
and the agreement sets forth the terms and conditions for staffing the HRA. The agreement was updated prior to approval of the 2021 agreement, and there are no proposed changes for the 2022 staff services agreement. The attached draft is for review and discussion. We'll come back before the HRA board for approval on November 23rd. Thank you. Um, Administrator Coleman, are there any questions for Administrator Coleman? Any comments? Are we comfortable with moving on to the next item? Commissioner Olson. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Um, not really. Um, we, we, we've had uh, a little bit of discussion about the changes that the HRA has gone through in the last several years. And um, uh, I, I posed a question uh, at a, several meetings ago, I think, about uh, how, how are things going in terms of adequacy of, of staff in terms of, uh, and I wasn't this specific, but in terms of do we have adequate staff and the right um, job description for staff. Um, and, and I don't know that it fits into this because I don't, uh, but anyway, I think it's, it's something that uh, as a commissioner, I wanna be supportive of, of the HRA having adequate staff uh, in those two dimensions. And so, uh, it, th this is the nuts and bolts of the thing, the, the big picture, right? Correct. Thank you, Commissioner Olson. So um, you're right. It doesn't necessarily call it out in the staff services agreement. Uh, the assessment for how we do development will bring about some of that information, as well as um, just regular review and updates to um, work and duties and just looking at that with staff. Uh, we would look at that. For the HRA, if, if I would like to change staff um, classification or and create a new position, I go through the city's process of asking for uh, reclassification with the HR, with community development director, with city legal, um, excuse me, um, city finance, city legal, HR, uh, city manager, excuse me, um, as well as in any change to new staff. All of that goes through the city's process. So um, right now, we're just looking at the workload that has been increased due to the OHO and the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Um, these are good things, but I think they were good things that we didn't fully expect so quickly. Um, because one of the things that comes out of that is the increase to the Section 8 staff's workload that I don't think was fully understood when the OHO was rolled out. So, uh, Chair Lewis, as, yes, I, as I hear you, uh, uh, Manager Coleman, this is something that's on your plate and you're, you're working um, uh, overtime to, to study it and and, and then you do the process that you're talking about. Yes. Just wanted to make sure that uh, as one commissioner that I, I support, I mean, it's like any organization has to do kind of a, a review of itself periodically. And this would be one of the things that I uh, didn't want it to be slipped under the radar because it, it's been significant. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Um, hearing no further discussion on that item, we will move to item 6.3, the 2022 Agreement for Legal Services. May we have the staff report, please? Yes. Annually, the HRA approves an agreement for legal services with a scope of work providing for general counsel that working under the direction of the authority shall perform in prompt, professional, and competent manner all necessary legal services that are requested by the authority. This past year, our general counsel have been very instrumental in the assistance of administration, negotiation, and program revisions amongst other services. It is the recommendation of myself that we enter into a biennial agreement for legal services, which is January 1, 2022 to December 31st, 2023, with our gener current general counsel firm due to the work that is currently underway, the historical knowledge of the general counsel, and the increase to the amount of development. The attached draft agreement for legal services is for review and discussion and will come back for approval at the next HRA board meeting, if so choose. Um, 
Thank you, Administrator Coleman. Um, I'll open it up for discussion. Is there any comments or questions? Chair Lewis. Uh, yes. Come I on. remember when um, this item came up uh, previously under the previous administrator, and we as a board had not taken uh, gone to uh, the proposal process uh, for many years for our legal counsel. And I think the board provided some input indicating that it was important to periodically, I don't know that we stayed at a time frame or said every year, um, go out to bid, so to speak. And I think you've worded it very well in terms of the importance of this particular uh, uh, legal counsel and how much they become a part in understanding how things work here. So I'm not necessarily disagreeing with it, but I think that um, you know, for the citizens also need to know that the the city is uh, puts these things out for you know RFP periodically. And I'm just wondering how other board members feel about the two-year term versus the one. Again, I completely understand you put it very well how important this council has been to past projects and uh, really how, how what a great job they're doing. They're very diligent. But on the other hand, there are processes to peri periodically reevaluate those kinds of things. And the second question would be having to do with uh, you know rates and uh, rates of payment and whether the board approves those and so forth. That's, that's really secondary. The big issue is really going on to RFP and how frequently we should be doing it. Administrator Coleman, when you chose the biennial um, time limit, um, what, what was the uh, reasoning behind that? Was it projects that were basically in the loop um, it, it's everything. It's the assessment that I know is coming that the general counsel is involved in. It is the Aon deal that is still ongoing. Um, it is the affordable housing trust fund uh, and the information there and working with Baker Tilly and the city. It is projects that we know should be coming on board that the general counsel is already working on. Um, and the fact that the projects coming on board that we have not approved, but we have received application, wouldn't even be done till 2023. So it's just considering all the different work, but the biggest factor is the expertise of HRA. Not just us, but HRAs and PHAs specifically. And um, Mr. Hartman can chime in. I don't know how we would convey how much expertise we need through an RFP, because I know you have previously thought about this. Um, Chair Lewis, commissioners, I mean, ju just as a, a, a reference, the, the the prior general counsel was held by the HRA for over 30 years. Um, and I think everybody's in agreement that, you know, a periodic RFP process would be superior to that. But um, we were well served by that general counsel, I do believe. Um, but yes, I mean, uh, to answer your question, Administrator Coleman, it is a very complicated world of the of the HRA, and it requires a level of expertise that is not found in every law firm. And to convey that in, through an RFP process can be very challenging. Um, you know, um, our council is not only represents us, but other housing authorities throughout the state. And uh, I think we are very well served by that expertise in this particular area, especially as it comes to development. Um, Commissioner Thorson, does that answer some of your questions? It does, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, are there any more questions or further discussion on this item? Um, hearing none, um, we will move to the last item on the agenda, 6.4, and that's our commissioner comments and or questions. Can I open? Yes, Commissioner Hukim. Thank you, Chair. Um, when speaking about the staff services and just um, all of that, I just was, it came to my head of um, just being able to really maybe recognize staff. It would be nice to have some staff maybe come to a meeting so we could have them here and thank them personally. Personally, I would like to thank them for their time and dedication and hard work, not just over TV. I understand that they have, they work long days and coming to a meeting might, but if we could put them number one on the on the agenda and just kind of you know recognize them because I know with COVID it's been a long time since we've probably seen faces and 
I just think, for me, it would just be nice to just kind of put faces to names and just be able to recognize them for their hard work within the HRA, if that would be something we could do. I, I concur. I think that would be great. If, I, 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 I will make a note of it. All right. Yeah, I wouldn't want to make, make their, their time more complicated by saying, okay, now you have to come to an HRA meeting. But Well, maybe if they could even do virtual, maybe. Yeah, or something. Um, just join us on WebEx or something. Yeah. And I know we were having introductions before COVID. We were having um, staff members come to our meetings so we could meet them and then COVID came and it's like last year didn't exist and now we're into another year. So that would, if that's something that we could do, that would be good. Are there any other comments? Okay. Um, I have one last one. Yes, Administrator Coleman. <laughs> um, Commissioner Olson, you had uh, asked at the last meeting regarding um, small businesses and BIPOC-owned businesses. There is a um, City Council Port Authority concurrent meeting tomorrow evening, November 10th. It's a special meeting. Um, and the item that will be discussed is the Small Business Development Center that is um, being discussed that is technically in the South Loop. So if you would like to tune in to that meeting um, to hear some of that information. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That would be great. All right. Um, are there any other comments? Um, hearing none, do I hear a motion to adjourn our meeting? I will make a motion to adjourn this meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Thorson. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And do I hear a second? Commissioner Thorson. I'm going to go together. <laughs> I was hoping you'd go together. <laughs> it has been moved by Commissioner Thorson with a second by Commissioner Beloga that we adjourn the meeting. <laughs> May I have the roll call vote, please? Beloga. Aye. Hugheen. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Olson. Aye. Thorson. Aye. The meeting is adjourned at 751.